Welcome uh, to the first uh, meetup of Sitecore User Group Columbus. Uh, my name is Himadri Chakraborty, uh, one of the organizers of uh, Columbus SUG. Uh, I am a Sitecore enthusiast, uh, active community member, and a seven time Sitecore technology MVP. Um, Sitecore User Group Columbus is an open community forum for networking and sharing knowledge about the Sitecore product ecosystem. Um, anyone interested to learn and share with Sitecore community is welcome to join. Uh, our goal is to learn more about Sitecore, help each other in the community and know each other. Molik. Hi everyone, I'm Maulik Dalji. Uh, I'm also a Sitecore enthusiast like Imadri. Uh, we both are in Columbus, so we started this SUG Columbus. Uh, I'm also an active community member. You might have seen me uh, frequently on Sitecore Lunch and uh, Slack. I have been passionately working on, passionately working on Sitecore since last 11 years and I would like to welcome everyone to SUG Columbus first session. Thanks. Madri. All right. So today we have an exciting lineup of speakers. Uh, we'll introduce them soon. But uh, before that, we would like to thank, um, thank them for accepting our invitation to speak. Um, we would like to thank everyone who joined today's meeting and we hope you enjoy the uh, talk. Uh, talks as much as we we will. Um, I would also like to thank Nistec for allowing me to use the Zoom meeting because uh, the free one is not something that we can use for two hours um, uh, and record things. Um, and this meeting will be recorded and, and shared in, in YouTube channel, uh, Columbus SG YouTube channel. Um, before we start, a um, couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we would like everyone to mute except speakers when they are presenting to reduce noises. noises. Um, if you have questions, please, please feel free to add that in the chat. Uh, organizers will repeat the questions to the speakers, uh, but um, if you if you want to talk, like you know, um, we can we can unmute you um, for further like you know discussion based on your question. Um, we will take a five minute break uh, between the two presentations uh, to prepare for the next talk. Um, thanks for your attention. Uh, I will now uh, introduce our first. Uh, speakers of our first session. Uh, the first session is uh, Sitecore and SAS, our shared journey, will be presented by Jason Stacier and Rob Arlen. Jason is a developer relation leader overseeing the strategy for technical evangelism at Sitecore. This means helping as many developers as possible with a focus on outreach, nurturing, and technical enablement. Currently, Jason is continuously learning about leading people, developer relations, public speaking, product marketing, and how to write speaker bios. Rob Erlam, Rob is seasoned technical evangelist with 14 plus years of experience in software planning, design, and implementation, originally from Manchester, now based in Melbourne, or Rob has been involved in a series of highly successful commerce and CMS projects worldwide. Rob uses his passion for technology to enable various developer communities globally. Now I will make uh, Rob and um, Jason the presenter. Give me just one minute, I'm allowing some people to come in. Okay. Jason. Okay, Jason, you are the host now. 
Ooh, fun. Alrighty. Well, let's start by me figuring out the very basics of Zoom, which is how do I get my screen share when this other screen share is happening? I should, should I, be able to. I should stop sharing. You know, I guess. All right. There we go. Let's share a screen. We're going to pull up a little content. You should be seeing uh, the big fast train moving that is Sitecore right now talking about SaaS. Let me know when it's coming through to your side. Yep. We can see it. Perfect. All right. So today, obviously, the first thing I want to say is thank you. It is so good to be able to be here for uh, being able to be at a, the first ever, I guess, Columbus Sitecore user group. One of the things that obviously uh, Rob and I have been working on a lot is how do we start talking about SaaS? And Rob and Peter just did this sort of talk. We're going to do a little version of this, which is a little bit more my flavor here today. Uh, my name's Jason. You heard the intros here. I'm leading our, our global evangelism crew. And Rob uh, has a lot of focus on DevOps and commerce and a bunch of things. But today in this session, Rob is going to show us how Sitecore SaaS pulls together with the tech that we've got today. Um, the first part that I want to talk through is kind of the evolution. So where are we now? What are we trying to get? What does that mean as a developer? What does that mean as a customer who's coming in and hearing about Sitecore for the first time? And what does that mean for customers who've already bought some form of Sitecore right now? So let's talk about some of the options and things that we've been talking about. Now, we started this talk about SaaS several years ago. Uh, it kind of started when we acquired Style Labs and we brought Content Hub into the family. And that was really the first time we started talking about SaaS software with, with being able to have you know, the end-to-end -end solution of content. Then we launched, I think it was end of 2019, we had Sitecore AI with auto personalization. So we had a personalization service, SaaS based, plugs into XP. And then we earlier this year did Experience Edge, which allowed us to get the end to end of content management plus content delivery, really solve the content pillar for SaaS. Then you probably all heard the news, all the massive acquisitions, you know, Box Ever, 451, Moose End. That's been letting us go and build out the rest of the SaaS story as we start trying to fill out this, what like Gartner and the industry are calling the composable DXP. So part of what I want to talk about is like, what is the difference between these platform DXPs, the composable DSPs, uh, and when do they make sense? So if we start with something like the traditional platform DXP, uh, this is something you're probably pretty familiar with. Everything is in kind of one big architecture. It's tightly coupled uh, and underneath the hood, there could be a whole bunch of stuff going on. Lots of different modules or microservices, all kinds of different parts moving to make the whole happen. But ultimately you're buying a thing. You can't go and just get like a piece of it and just grab that out and run it on its own. They're all naturally grown together. They integrate really well. And that's the big benefit. That's how Sitecore XP and other platform vendors got a lot of benefit is that there's a simplicity to that. You want to get started. You want to get all these features. You want it natively integrated. And there's a huge benefit. And that's what attracts customers to it is they're trying to digitally transform. They want to get a whole lot and take advantage of it. But that comes with some downsides as well. Usually a complexity to, to hosting because now you're trying to optimize for how do you host for what exactly you're using and getting your costs down um, or how much flexibility do you have to be able to turn things on, turn things off. Uh, and so usually with a platform DXP, you don't have as many of those options available. When we think about instead what's being termed the composable DXP, we're not thinking in that model at all. Now we're talking about all kinds of different products, best of breed products, completely standalone. Uh, and customers, instead of buying something that solves all their needs, saw, buy a bunch of things, then integrate all of them together, and you get a best of breed mesh of everything. So some of those components might come from the same vendor. Let's say that you were buying several pieces from Sitecore. But typically, you're buying pieces from all over the place. And then you've got all these different vendors involved. You're pulling them together. 
So being API driven is huge for this because you need it to be simple to integrate. Now, typically this starts with content sources. Now this could be a headless CMS. It could be a CRM. It could be a headless commerce system. You've got some way of content having to get out there. Then you have to start meshing it all together. Uh, and pulling a bunch of best of breed business apps that are, they're going to solve a particular problem. And you as an implementation team can choose the technology you want to build on. Maybe it's Next, maybe it's Vue, maybe you're on Detmite like Core. You pick what you want, you consume the APIs, you pull your content sources in, and then you've got your integrated DXP. And from here, because you have all that flexibility, you can also have flexibility in where you host. So now you're deploying out to Vercel or Azure or Netlify, whatever it is. So this is the big benefit of all this technology freedom. Um, so you can start to see why some folks might start going this route because there seems to be this balance of ease of use for the business and getting what they want and a lot of technology flexibility. On the business side, you're thinking about faster time to value. Uh, consider that you're usually only buying the piece you actually want to use right now. So you're not buying a big platform with plans to use it. You pay for what you need to, you implement what you need, and now you're using it. So that you're getting a faster time to that value of what you've just gotten. And you're using things that are best of breed. Rather than trying to find something that goes broad, you're getting somebody who goes in depth on one particular business area and solves that problem. You also have a customer-centric model here. Because no longer are you thinking, what is the big piece that might be best for me? But you can tailor it to the specific needs of a customer. If they only need personalization and they don't need marketing automation, well, you go get the personalization piece and you don't get the marketing automation piece. And from a technology perspective, some of that flexibility comes across. Because now you've got things like, I can go into any marketing stack that's already there. Because the model of what I'm doing, this kind of Jan stack approach... I'm already pulling everything in as different pieces. So it's a lot easier for me to integrate into an existing stack. Hey, Jason. So, oh, sorry. Yes? Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, do you, you are the host. Might be there are some people waiting. I'm, I gave up the host to you, so sorry. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. Somebody was indeed trying to come in and I thought somebody else was going to do that while I was talking. I didn't. Sorry see. about. I, I think that was my dude that, that was trying to get in. <laughs> it's uh, okay. It's too bad we can't share hosting duties so that we can both be able to run. I, this I, I, we can do that, but um, you have to be in the organization. That's okay. Let's. let's ah, yeah. of course. Now, as I was saying, things can get kind of specifically tailored from a technology perspective right into what a customer needs. And also all that freedom for detecting, build how you want to do it. So regardless of whether you go traditional or you want to go with a composable option, the way Sitecore looks at DXPs is kind of as three pillars. You got your content, you got your experience, you got your commerce. And then we look at, well, how do you want to host, right? There's going to be organizations who have very specific security needs, very specific privacy needs, something, maybe data residency, they want to host it themselves. Other organizations, they're willing to give up a little bit of that responsibility. They might be looking at something like a managed cloud where they want a cloud hosted option where they're not holding everything, but they want a lot of control. And then you have the as a service model. I don't want to think about IT at all. Just make it happen. I don't want to think about upgrades. I don't want to think about what functionality is there. Just do it. Uh, and when we start thinking about how Sitecore has been doing this, really the platform DXP that Sitecore has offered fits really well into the your cloud, our cloud options. We've always provided that ability for you to do on-prem. You've got to see this as experience manager, experience platform, experience commerce, tackling these three pillars. But then when we started talking about SaaS, what is it that we need to do to make a composable DXP meet the needs of organizations who want that as a service. So we need a hybrid CMS, we need DAM, we need some kind of content operations. For experience, we've got to have a CDP, we've got to have options for personalization and marketing automation. And on the commerce side, storefronts, 
order management, things like that. So this is where we started trying to build it out. And Sitecore was able to build out things like getting Content Hub, building out Experience Edge, being able to kind of handle the content pillar. The recent acquisitions that we've made of BoxEver, 451, Moosen, they're filling in those pieces of these other pillars. So now you can see how we've gone and we've now got the options for how do you want to host? What part of the DXP do you want? And we're able to cover a lot of this. Now, this is not a silver bullet, right? Like, it, I can't come in and tell you today that's like, everybody should do a composable DSP. It just doesn't work. There's going to be different scenarios. You have to talk to customers. You have to find out what the requirements are. Um, for example, you might have a customer who comes in and they really want WYSIWYG editing. They love the old style of, of having lots of WCMS features. They want easy integration and maybe they're digitally transforming and they just, they want everything all at once. That sounds like a great fit for a platform DXP. Get the comprehensive piece, get all of it, makes it really easy. Now, if you are, instead you encounter a customer that's saying, well, I kind of feel like I want to go headless. I've got some, some existing, you know, marketing stack I want to use. I'm not sure I want to adopt all of this functionality right now. Or I have a tech team that really wants to build in their specific way. This is when a headless web experience really makes sense. This is when something Jamstack supporting uh, composable DXP seems like a better fit. So asking questions, figuring out what is going to be the right fit for a given customer. Now, all of this, we want to make sure that that's from a new customer's perspective, but we have existing customers that are out there. They've got the platform today. Now we're talking about SaaS all the time. Does this mean you're being left behind? No, we're, we're still investing in the platform. We're still making sure that that is a leading platform. But if an existing customer, say on XM, wants to start taking advantage of some of these SaaS offerings, you can. For example, you might want to add box ever, do some personalization. Uh, or maybe you're take, talking about adding on something like Order Cloud to just add on the e-commerce functionality. And similarly, if you're looking at something like XP, maybe it's DAM, maybe it's Experience Edge, maybe that's the SaaS option that makes sense with what you have there. And you also have Sitecore Experience Commerce, which can if you've got this built in, you've already got XM and XP already. So maybe product catalog management or DAM is what makes sense for you there. Basically, regardless of where you are as an existing customer, there's an option where you can still add some SaaS bonus on top of that. Um, so I think what, one of the things we're going to see is, is this adoption of being able to put things together and doing a lot more integration work at the application layer. Now, what I want to walk through right now before we turn it over to a demo is an example of this journey. Let, let's take a, the, a scenario of a customer that's using Sitecore XM today, but they want to move towards a composable DXP. What does that look like? Well, probably the first step that they should be thinking about is how do I get this content out everywhere wrapped by an API? So you want to go headless. And when we launch Experience Edge for XM, that's really going to help customers who are on XM be able to start having a nice, easy GraphQL API, totally available on the edge. You can start having your websites globally, your XM kind of sitting behind that. So you've kind of put a SaaS layer in front of your managed WCMS. But what we don't have here is personalization. And this is when we start, because we've gone headless, hey, now we can start pulling in these other APIs. We can get something like BoxEver, now we've got a best of breed CDP. We can get personalization, decision making, plug that into our app. What about getting some better media management? Well, again, we've got a media library in the WCMS, but we can start using our DAM for this. Using the DAM allows us to now have a SaaS hosted option. Our media is getting pulled out. We got a whole bunch more functionality over on that. And this also opens up the ability for us to use it other places, not just the website. So this allows us to replace our media library. Now we've got Content Hub in the mix. Content strategy becomes available to us. We can start having workflow, doing strategic planning and collaboration, use things like CMP. And this starts moving more and more of what we've been doing over in XM 
over into that centralized marketing module, being able to do content strategy there, pushing it to XM, which can then go out to our website. And by doing this flow, I'm now able to use Content Hub as the hub of everything, which means I can now start doing other channels. So might be a native mobile app, might be a kiosk, whatever it is, I can start consuming these different APIs. I can use Experience Edge for Content Hub to get at my content. I can get at my DAM. I can get a box ever for personalization and start using this on all these channels. So I've gone from just having my XM instance with my website to now being able to leverage all this, everything, everywhere by taking kind of simple steps. But I'm not done yet because now I want to do commerce. Because Order Cloud is API driven, completely headless, any of these channels can now start consuming Order Cloud and using that. You can start going on your mobile app, firing off purchases, and be able to use Order Cloud right away. Now, this opens up the option because I've got Content Hub running to do product catalog management for Order Cloud. So you can see how all these pieces start kind of clicking together, and we're doing it as the customer is ready to take that journey. You don't have to take all the pieces all shoved together and do it all at once and then eventually get there. You can kind of add the pieces on as you're ready to do it. Now with that, I think this is a great time for us to throw the ball over to Rob. Rob, I'm gonna make you a host. Uh, what, we're, what Rob's gonna do is an example of how you can use all of those different options today using our existing uh, integrations and using a demo built on Lighthouse, if I remember, Rob, right? Yes, that's right. So let me share the right screen. Okay, hopefully you guys can see the exact same slide that Jason just showed. Yes. Okay, so Jason talked through an example scenario. But as he said, I basically wanna show you what you can actually achieve today. And I'm gonna show you this awesome demo that's been built out by the demo team here at Sitecore, run by JF, I'm sure a few of you spoke to him before. It's gonna show you how you can work with these products today. And we're gonna start by loading up Content Hub, and we're gonna use the product catalog management feature called PCM. And this is where you basically go to manage all your catalog data. So we're gonna start off by loading the catalogs here. And we're gonna see there's a few defined. Today, we're gonna to be working with this Lighthouse Fitness catalog. If you load that up, you can see there's a series of products that are defined in there. If we go back to the main menu above though, the next section is for product families, and that's where you're gonna manage your category data. In here, we can see quite a few that are defined, but luckily we have this nice faceting on the left that lets us refine this down. We refine by Lighthouse Fitness, and we're gonna be working with the cycling category today. You click on that to load it up, and you get some basic category data. You get a label, you get a description, a bit of imagery. And we can use that products tab to see all the products that are defined in there. Obviously, that main image as well is coming out of Sitecore DAM being integrated into Content Hub here. The final menu in PCM is for products. We can go in there and this is now going to list all of the products in PCM. So you can see there's quite a lot of data in there. But again, you get this rich faceting on the left to make it easy to find what you want. So we can refine by the Lighthouse Fitness Catalog. And then even still, we can get also refined by the cycling category we're working with. And now we get a list of all of the products that are available in that cycling category. Clicking on one of the products, and for anyone who's worked with commerce systems before, there's nothing really groundbreaking here. It's basic commerce data. Textual data, like the name of the product, the description. You have things like category data in there. Um, we can scroll a bit further down. There's your commercial information, handling pricing and the like, packaging, product specs. We can go to the assets and working out of um, Content Hub, it's, it's a nice way to integrate your product catalog data directly with your digital asset management. So these imageries of the cycle, um, the home cycle thing you can see here, that's coming out of Sitecore's digital asset managed platform, Sitecore's DAM. So really what we have here now is, is a single source of truth for our product data. Our merchandisers can log in here. We can create all of our textual data, all our financial information around pricing, and all of the imagery data as well. But it's not just images. If you had specification data, any assets that exist in your DAM can be assigned over to your, to your individual products here. 
So that's pretty cool. That's that's the first product. That's product. That's Content Hub. That's PCM. How can we start to leverage this in other systems? Though? Well, the logical next step for this is to take it over to Order Cloud, and because that's our ecom platform where we can start to work with that product data. So let's do that. I'm going to hop over to Order Cloud now. And when you first create an account with Order Cloud, you get access to their portal, and that's what you can see here. This basically allows you to send raw requests to Order Cloud's API to test things and configure your instance. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check on working in the correct sandbox. I created one for Subcon on the weekends. That's the one we're going to be working with here. And then we're going to make sure we're using the API console, using the menu on the left. And this basically lets you craft raw requests to send to Order Cloud. And you can see there's a heap of them in this column on the left. Things covering orders, suppliers. We're going to be working with the catalog data today, though. So we're going to start off with this catalog request. And I'm just going to fire that straight away, send a get request to the API. And that gives me a JSON object back showing all the catalogs I have in my Order Cloud instance. And you can see our Lighthouse Fitness catalog in there. I'm going to copy that ID, and we're going to go over to the category request next. And this middle pane allows you to basically enter fields and values to send in the request. And you'll see some of asterisks on there. So that basically signifies this is a required field, the catalog ID. So if I try and send this request without populating that, I'm going to get a validation error. So I copied the ID before. I'm going to paste it in, send this request off. And we can see we get back four categories in this JSON object here. And the nice thing here is it's, it's an interactive object. So I can go and collapse these down. And we're trying to find the cycling category. It's in here somewhere. And there we go. We, we found our cycling category that we're working with. So let's go one level deeper. Let's take a look at the products. I'm going to paste my catalog ID in again. I'm going to copy my cycling ID this time. We'll paste that into the category ID field. And then we'll send that request off to the API. And here you can see we have 10 products returned. You get a bit of metadata at the top of the JSON describing the object that's being returned to you. And if we look at the products themselves, it's the same data we just saw. It's your textual data, your label, your name. You have your XP field, which is how you extend properties in Order Cloud. So in here, we have some things like order numbers and the like. And then the interesting piece is when you get to these assets below. Remember, we'd linked to our, our digital asset management platform before, and we'd assigned some assets to the product. Well, you can see here, we have direct URLs to access those assets being returned in this JSON object. So that means when this product is rendered in an application of some sort, we already have direct URLs to access Sitecore DAM to pull out the correct imagery for it when it's being shown. Okay, so... We've had the commerce data in Order Cloud. Uh, well, it started off in Content Hub, sorry, PCM. From there, we've sent the data over into Order Cloud. How can we use it now it's in here? Well, Order Cloud is a headless delivery commerce API. So the next logical step is to build ahead and start to consume that data. And that's what we've done. We're going to flip over now to Lighthouse Fitness, which is what you can see. And this is a JSS application built to pull content from an XM instance and commerce data from an order cloud, instance, order cloud instance that you just saw. We're going to dive into the shop section. And here you can see the same categories we saw before, the same four. Again, we're going to stick with our cycling category. You'll notice again, all the imagery being pulled out of the dam that we saw before in Content Hub. Once we load that up, we get the same 10 products that we saw in our JSON objects inside order cloud. So we can scroll through and see all the different products being returned there. If we click on one of the products, again, this isn't groundbreaking rocket science or anything. This is pretty standard econ functionality. You've got your title, your description, you've got an add to cart button, but this is all data flowing through these systems behind. That's the textual data that was defined in PCM beforehand, made it through to Order Cloud. Those two images are being pulled directly from Sitecore's dam using the URL that was sent through to Water Cloud and then served down to this application. So you can see we now have the data flowing quite nicely between these three different systems. What happens when we actually want to start to edit this data though? So say I'm a merchandiser or a marketer and I need to go and update some product details. What's my actual day-to-day -day workflow look like? Well, let's give it a go. I'm going to start by hopping back over to PCM because that's our source of truth. That's where all our data exists. And we're going to go back and load up our product categories. And we're going to dive into our cycling category we're working with. 
if you look at the products in here, you'll see that some of them um, are still marked as in review or under review, sorry. So they haven't gone all the way through workflow yet. So we're gonna take one of those. We'll use this Serenity Silver Stream helmet and we're gonna push it through workflow and publish it out to the site. Luckily, someone's been good enough to go and populate all this data for us ahead of time. And it's the same data we saw before. All the textual data is there, the commercial pricing data. Um, you can see we have the assets tab, we have all our imagery there. And I'm pretty happy with this. If you look at the panel on the right, you can see the workflows displayed and it's currently in validation state. So I'm going to approve this product and I'm going to send this out and basically say it's ready to be published. You get a notification in the bottom left and you'll see we get a new button appear saying publish to order cloud. And that's how we integrate these two products and send this data over. So I'm going to hit that publish to order cloud button now. And that's going to take this product data and send it over to order cloud ready to be used in my app. You see, again, we get a little notification in the bottom and that's my working um, PCM in content hub done. So let's hop back over to order cloud. I'm just going to send the exact same API request I sent before, because we're still dealing with the same cycling category. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed, we should see the product count change from 10 to 11 when I do that. You see, we get the new JSON object back. And there we go. We can see our total count has now changed to 11. I'm going to collapse these down again like I did before. And I'm pretty sure my Serenity Silver Street Helmet is going to be the last product in the list. I don't want too many. And here we go. Here's my Serenity Silver Stream Helmet, the product we just approved in PCM. So that's pretty awesome. The last thing we need to do is check it in um, JSS. Let's go and load that up now. I'm going to use the back button, return to the home page, and then I'm going to load up that shops, shops page again. Once more, we'll dive into the cycling category. And then again, it was the last product in the list, so I'm expecting it to be the bottom here. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Serenity Silverstream Helmet. This is the product we just pushed live. We can click on it and we can see all the data that came out of PCM. And my title, description, and my imagery coming out of the dam again. So that's pretty awesome. We've got a really nice scenario now showing how Content Hub with their PCM products and dam, so two products from there really, can play really nicely with Order Cloud. And then how we can build a really nice user interface, a, a headless shopping experience, pulling data from Order Cloud and from XM. So that's, it's kind of nailed our data display story. We, we've got data from these systems and we're showing it to our end users. But Cycle has always been about more than that. We've always been about our experiences, our personalization, our, our interaction tracking and the like. So how do we start to do that? Well, Jason talked earlier about a product or a company we acquired called Box Ever with a CDP involved. So let's see how we can integrate that as well. Let's start to track some data. Boxever has already been integrated in the site. So I'm going to hop over there straight away. The user I'm logged in as basically only has access to the CDP here. So we're not going to be building our experiences, personalizing. We're not going to be doing any data decisions or anything. We're purely looking at getting interaction data in for the, in this scenario. If I go to the guest section here, here you can see all the different users that have data for my site I was working on. And I'm just going to flip over to visitors first because I'm currently browsing anonymously. And you can see there's an anonymous user there from about 45 minutes ago, which is the user I've been working with. We can get some information about it. You can see when I access the site, the device I'm using on, and then you can go and get some timeline data as well, where you get a little bit more information about things like the operating system I'm working with and the actual website I used. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to convert this anonymous user into a registered visitor. So a pretty standard for anyone who's worked with XP before. So again, back to JSS. I'm going to use the back button to return to the home page, but this time I'm going to use the register page and I'm going to create an account. I already have a Rob Earl and Carl there, so we'll use a fake name. We'll go with uh, Dave Jones in this example. Uh, we'll enter an email address and populate the other fields as well. Make sure I type things correctly. <laughs> the next thing the site's going to ask me to do is to register my sports interests. What sports am I interested in? Um, I quite like basketball, but Definitely a beginner at it. It's, it's not something I'm great at. Bowling, on the other hand, that's my jam. I'm an excellent bowler, so we'll, we'll, we'll put that down. We'll continue, and that's going to confirm my account registration. 
And that'll take me back to the home page. And you see, it's going to display my Dave Jones name now, showing that I'm a registered user. I just want to create a little bit more data. So maybe I want to get interested in golf. I want to pick up a new sport. So I'm going to register for this Chilliwack golf tournament. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to attend that to learn more about the game. And you can see the content here changes a little bit from the register view to the, the information for users who are registered and directions and the like. Okay, I think that's probably enough data for us to work with here. So let's flip back to box over again. I'm going to go back to my guest channel. Straight away, you can see Dave Jones is there. Um, before we click on Dave, I'm just going to go to my anonymous users first. And you can see my user from 45 minutes ago is gone. I'm now a registered user. I'm no longer anonymous. So let's flip back to the customers and let's load up Dave's profile and take a look at what Dave's been up to. You get a little bit more data here now, but similar to before. You can see the device data, how often I've accessed the site and the like. Again, we can go back to the timeline and we can expand on this and see kind of what exactly I've been doing. You can see the uh, interaction to view the Chile Watt Golf Tournament. Uh, you can see some other page view events. What else do we have? Oh, we've got the registration event where I actually went and created my user and changed from anonymous over to registered. That's recorded. And all the other pages that I've viewed, viewing the homepage, the shop page, all the different events that I've basically been active on in the site. So now we have that data in the CDP. It opens up a lot of different um, scenarios. That enables you to do things like data decisions, uh, enable things like next best choices, and even creating like entirely personalized web experiences, doing things like A-B testing and the like, really just like the bread and butter of what BoxEver is really good at. So it's a pretty amazing demo, I'm sure you'll agree. The, these products only came on board a couple of months ago. So to already have, you know, content hub data flowing down into order cloud, have that being made available to consume headlessly alongside JSS and content from there, and then to have all that data being served into BoxEver to be able to use for future personalization and, and other experience type scenarios. It's really impressive, I think, that it's coming together so quickly. And uh, to be honest with you, I think that kind of proves out the theory and the proven point around this composable DXP Jamstack style de development scenario. Like previously, wiring all these things together would have taken so much longer. It's, it's a much nicer, quicker way to work, I think. So I've got a couple of slides here left just to finish up before we take your questions. But really, I, I just want to summarize and say what myself and Jason have been talking about here is the optionality that Sitecore is looking to offer moving forwards. There are certainly going to be customers who want to jump on this composable DXP SaaS train as fast as possible. They want to use the latest and greatest headless technologies. And we're really looking forward to helping those customers achieve their goals. But we really don't want existing customers or new customers who don't want to or can't adopt those platforms yet, we don't want them to feel like they're being left behind. There's still a highly capable suite of Sitecore products here to help out those customers as well. And both the platform DXP side and the composable DXP side have active roadmaps that are actively developed on. Really, what we're talking about here is Sitecore being available wherever our customers need us to be. I just want to finish up talking about the composable DXP though and, and where we see it going. This is where we are today. We're, we're calling it Milestone 1. You can take these standalone products and as I just showed, you can construct a headless composable DXP. It'll be a best of breed solution assembled by direct API integration. Obviously, we don't want to stop here. Next up for us is what we're calling obviously Milestone 2. And our aim is to work on the integration between these products. We 100% want them to remain as standalone, individually sellable products. But we also want customers who choose multiple products from Sitecore to get a nice integration. And we want that to come as a standard feature. But what's the end game here? You know, and I'll, I'll be honest, if Sitecore is aiming very high, we want to be the leading cloud DXP. We want our composable DXP to contain products that are individually sellable, as we said, but have a unified user interface and API across the entire product suite. Our end goal is that when our customers are building these composable DXPs, it is a natural first choice for them to be selecting multiple Sitecore products when doing so. 
So thanks for listening to me and Jason present Psych Home and SAS and the journey we're looking and well, yeah, we're really excited to be going on with yourselves. Does anyone have any questions? So um, Jason, I think this question for both of you probably, uh, Jacques, you want to ask the question? Uh, Jacques has a question. Sure. Um, so if you're a customer that's paying for Sitecore and then you're moving piece by piece to move towards this composable DXP, how does that affect, uh, I don't know, operating cost? I'm not sure if that's the right word, but uh, you're paying for Sitecore and then you're paying for another piece and then you're paying for another piece or is it kind of, can you do like a package? Like how does this work? I guess there's, it sounds like you're talking about both like the licensing and then also like the operating cost of like running the thing, right? Because so when you, when you look at the composable DXP, your, your, your main benefit of having the separate pieces is you're only paying for the thing you're using. So you go and you say, I'm doing personalization now as part of our evolution. I pay for this thing and then I use it and I'm not paying for anything else. So in an equivalent um, platform DXP world, right? If you buy XP and you pay for the full license of XP, it's natively integrated, but you've paid for EXM, uh, XConnect, you've got the CDP in there, you've got your personalization, you've got marketing automation, right? You got all these pieces, which is great, but it has a price tag to it. Um, now that I, we're still gonna have to see how it, ultimately lands from pricing and packaging everything together in general in the industry it costs more to buy all the functionality from a bunch of different vendors than it does to buy one platform dxp because there's an efficiency in packaging it all up together you don't typically it's not best of breed so it's not going all the way to the depth as each one of those vendors would go so you're kind of like paying for different things i would say uh, but you get the option of not having to buy everything. And you're also then also from an implementation perspective, your implementation costs are different. So you go and buy XP, you've got all this stuff, but it's all natively integrated. You go to a composable DXP, you got to think about your API driven, your headless, you're doing a lot of integration work yourself. Uh, so that's where, where Rob was talking about like milestone two and milestone three with the fully integrated piece. That's where we want to start addressing some of that part where making it easier to pull those pieces together when you buy multiple from one vendor so that you have that lower cost option by going to a single vendor and buying multiple pieces. Now, ultimately, if you talk operating costs, people are like talking hosting by the month, right? And SaaS is always more than doing it yourself. It just always is, right? Because people always look at what's the number I have to pay on the bill. They don't take into account things like the you've got to have somebody who's going to answer the call, call at 3 a.m. to make sure the server gets rebooted in the data center, right? Everybody's been sold on the benefits of the cloud. They know it has a price tag to it. Sometimes they get a little bit of a sticker shock because of that. But I think the industry in general has come around to that. That higher price tag is worth a lot when your core business is not IT hosting. Um, but there are some organizations that have built up entire arms of the organization to do IT hosting. It is cheaper for them to operate it than to go pay Microsoft and do it. Uh, so I think that that's a bit on the operating cost perspective in terms of what the considerations are. Uh, but from a pricing and packaging perspective, I, I just haven't seen the numbers, I don't know. Rob, I don't know if you've seen anything that was on that. I don't think we've announced anything yet. No, no. I mean, just to add to what you said as well, I mean, if you are doing this phased migration approach as well, you're currently already, and you're hosting yourself, as you said, you're already hosting your XMXP app, whatever it is. These extra services will have a licensing cost, as you said. Well, from a hosting perspective, they are all SaaS. You're not going to have to go and stand up new databases and new application instances. It's just really a case of taking your existing application and calling out to these new services. Okay, cool. A lot of plug and play and it, like easy integration. I like to hear that. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice to do an easy integration and say that, but somebody eventually has to actually do the integration. <laughs> we all know that as a developer on the project doing the integration, you're all just, oh, 
I have to integrate two things. But the industry has changed a lot from like 10 years ago when it, when system integration was this huge, awful thing where you would uh, get a project thrown your way and you just blow out the estimate of what the project was going to be because, oh no, we've got three systems to integrate. I can't, we've got to put a big risk factor on it. Uh, the Jamstack approach and, and how vendors have changed in terms of making APIs uh, and, and the way they're delivering their packages uh, makes it a lot easier. So you can go and get something from some vendor over here and some vendor over here, and they're kind of talking in the same way, uh, which lowers some of that risk. Uh, I think it's well the fun. Oh, sorry. Go on, Jason. <laughs> well, I, I was, I was going to, I was just going to say, but it does mean that you have to have a team that's ready to do that style, uh, which I think is going to be something in our psych community. We're going to see change when we introduced JSS. There was a lot of talk about what does this mean for a psych developer? Uh, and I think as we go down to headless, composable DXP, TypeScript, all this stuff, we're going to see a change in how we build as well. How, what does an application look like? I think as well, the fact that API first systems, so, and it's the same API everyone's using. So it's, it's like, for example, our box server CDP has an API you can call. Everyone's using that same API. I mean, I know I've worked on some horrible projects in the past, integrating with some custom BizTalk server that was built primarily for it that no one else had integrated with before. And I think that's where some of the integration nightmare scenarios came from. Whereas now it's, it's a standard API across the board. So if you run into an issue, you're probably not the first person who has. It's easier to get support around those issues. It's easier to find out best practices. Um, it should be, as Jason said, less painful. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. And I, nice discussion. If I can add, like, you know, take this here, like, order cloud licensing and pricing is quite, quite different. It's actually kind of based on fair model. Like, you know, it depends on number of products and how many transactions you have on the system. So if, if it is a smaller company, they pay less. If it's a bigger company, like, you know, with a lot of sales and things, they pay uh, they pay more. That's the beauty of the like you know SaaS SaaS pricing model. I think. So. And and just on that, Hamadri, that's an awesome thing with Order Cloud. I I want to make sure we're clear. SaaS does not equal that you necessarily get that. <laughs> yeah. Not all oh, SaaS absolutely. products are built the same way and, and have that awesome ability to kind of price by value delivered. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a direction that Sitecore would like to go in. But you can already, you know, and have more of that type of optionality where you can come in and try something out and you're kind of on the lower bandwidth. We did the same thing with Cycro AI right now. We have the free Cycro AI, but it's kind of capped and you don't get all the features. And there's like a premium version. I think that that's definitely the direction the SaaS uh, vendors are going. Uh, and I think right. it's definitely when you look at SaaS options in a composable DXP, whoever it is you're talking to take a look and see whether that option is available for that because that can really help to like what Zach was talking about, like operation costs. Like if you wind up not selling that much, you don't want to pay for the full thing. Uh, yeah. that, that's yeah. a huge benefit. That, that, I think that's the interesting thing about it is actually in the SaaS model, as you can plug and play, if you think about the pricing also, you can play with a lot with pricing like you know, compared to monolithic architecture, you have to have the whole XP with you. Even if you do not want like, you know, maybe the XM or something, but you have to have it. Uh, I mean, XM probably is a not good example. Uh, so I, I, anyone else has any question? Probably not, but I have one question for Rob. Um, Rob, you showed that um, demo in CMP. Actually, the integration is done with like, you know, Content Hub uh, and Order Cloud. So, so will that be available to everyone or is just an integration that partners have to do? So it was with PCM, not CMP. So oh, the sorry. product panel PCM, stuff. Yes, yes, um, it's a good question. I, I believe there are plans to make it available, the integration between the two. Um, I'll have to find out when that's going to happen and in what format. Um, yeah, how, how it's going to be made available for sure. I'll have to find out for you. All right. Thank you.
All right. Uh, if there is no other question, uh, Rob, can you can you make me host? I think we. Hi. Ah, yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm host now. All right.